When you buy a brake like this, the fingers come sharp so you can get a nice crisp bend. Hopefully you can see this. And this is 50-52 sheet. And it's even, this stuff's starting to crack. So on these fingers, I put them in the mill and rounded them over. Gave them a little bit of a radius. That works out better. So normally if you were making a sheet metal intake manifold, you'd have all this clamped in a thick fixture so when you're welding it doesn't, it minimizes distortion. I don't enjoy making full sheet metal intakes anymore. I threw those fixtures away, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. So this would be worst case scenario, you would probably never have an intake with runners this close. But I had a comment, somebody asked what you do if it's hard or nearly impossible to get in to put a full weld around each runner. And when you're coming off your tack welds, you don't want to just chop the heat off real fast because it'll cool and contract too quickly and you'll sometimes you get cracks in your tack welds. So just try to ramp off a little bit slower. Or you can preheat the whole part so it doesn't pull the heat away and crack. And we got a little gap here so you can tack weld it and then while it's cool and you push down to get that nice and tight. You can't ramp the amperage off unless you have a good amperage controller like a TIG button or a foot pedal. This base plate's 3 8 thick, and the sheet's 8 inch thick, but normally you want to use something thicker, probably half inch at least, so you minimize warping on the gasket surface. It's going to have to be, you know, a normal intake would have to be machined afterwards anyways. You'd have to get it all dialed in on a mill and face the gasket surfaces, even with a fixture.
that was 325 hertz. This is 35 hertz. up to 60 hertz. Okay, so if you're building the sheet metal intake and the runners are real close, even if they're, you know, you've got like a half inch gap, you still can't get a pretty weld all the way around them. So it's not sealed up yet right here. You would have a vacuum leak or a boost leak where it's not welded. So what you do, get out your weapon of choice. This little ball carbide, carbide burr is what I like best. Dip it in a little bit of cutting fluid of your choice so it doesn't clog up. So by creating that open groove, here let me draw it. So that would be your vertical sheet, then your base plate. You open that up so the weld will lay in there fairly flat so you have less grinding to do. And then that will actually, if you do it right, you do it deep enough, it will tie in and create a seal across to your outside weld right at that right at that corner where it wraps around. Hopefully that makes sense. Get the tungsten sticking out a little further so you can see what you're doing. Not too far though. Then this bit's my favorite for flattening welds out, the rough part before you sand them. I've probably had this same bit for 20, 25 years. And if you just use it on aluminum to keep it lubed up, they last pretty dang long.
Okay, hopefully you got the idea on that. You just smooth this out, take it as far as you want. And then that weld in there ties into your outside weld, and makes a full seal. And you'll want to, for safety reasons, you'll want to make some kind of pressure leak down tester. Like make, you know, your jig that you're welding it in or milling it in. Put gaskets in, tighten everything down, plug it up and pressurize it. And then spray around here with soapy water and make sure there's no bubbles coming out or put a pressure gauge on it and see if it leaks down overnight. Especially with um, like turbocharged or supercharged applications, your injector will spray in and if you have a bad leak, that's a huge fire hazard. It'll spray atomized air and fuel out and if that gets on a header, you'll have a pretty mean fire. So make sure you do a good job.